On this episode of The Review, the Project Car gets some breaks. Meet Nasiok moderator Redot as we take a look at his crib. Our final real forum members of Genius, Off Topics Haiku Corner, and much more. Right now on the Periodic Review of Nasiok. Alacrity 024. Now you're probably wondering where the hell the periodic review has been. Well, we decided to take a summer vacation from the show to write some new material. It was a pretty good summer, chock full of action. Alacrity 024 wrote a song, Chocolate Rain. I went back to school for my journalism degree. So that's how you be funny. Alacrity 024 came up to Alaska. What's up, I'm in Alaska. And I made a YouTube video. Leave the 2008 Impreza alone! Damn, I look really good in eyeliner. Anyway, the review will be back on schedule with episodes being released every two months. Some say it did the Kessel Run in three parsecs. Some say it's Dad's an SRT4 and it's more Machito. All we know is, it's called the Sti- Periodic Review Project Car. In our last episode, we replaced the suspension on the project car with a set of coilovers from Enduratec. Now that the car is up on handling, it's time to give it some more stopping power. The stock brakes on a WRX are fine, they'll stop the car, but take it to a track day, an autocross, or a steep twisty canyon, and you'll notice there's room for improvement. To illustrate this, we're going to stop the car 10 times back to back from 60 miles an hour and measure the distances. The stock brakes are obviously not up to the task of sustained heavy braking. The stopping distance was steadily increasing each time we stopped the car, so we capped our test to 10 stops because we didn't want to risk driving off into the woods. Look at that spread. And stop 10. 181 feet 2 inches. It's about 60 feet further than the first stop. I think there's room for improvement. Synaptic 3 Engineering offers a brake upgrade package which is specifically tailored to each car it's used on. At its core, the package consists of DVA rotors, cobalt friction pads, and fluid transfer product lines. The products Synaptic chooses to carry represent a combination of performance, reliability, and results. A lot of people, when they just upgrade pads, it's much better to view it as a complete system because uh, there really is no one failure point. You can expect with this particular setup to feel like you did a big brake package upgrade. The most important contribution that the DBA rotors make is dissipating the heat at the rotor level. The uh, DBA rotors have the paw print which gives you uh, a multi-directional heat dissipation throughout the rotor's surface internally. The benefit of going with a two-piece rotor over a single-piece rotor is the fact that you've got uh, dissimilar metals. You've got an aluminum hat and a cast iron rotor. The aluminum hat will basically dissipate heat better for you and it will also allow for uh, rotor growth. The cobalt pads don't use uh, any type of a binder to hold the pad material together and the stopping ability with these pads is phenomenal. It's the highest torque rated pad on the market today. Cobalt Friction offers a wide range of pads to satisfy everyone from the casual weekend warrior to the most cutting-edge prototype racer. If your car will spend more time on the street than the track, Cobalt Friction's lowliest pad, the GT Sport, will be more than adequate. If you want a set of Cobalt Friction pads for your Subaru, Synaptic 3 is one of the only places in North America to find them. The pads that we're putting on today will squeal. They will also dust. If you got a show car, it's not going to be the pad for you. If you're a guy that wants the most performance, 
it's the pad for you. The reason why you should install stainless lines is because the stainless coating is uh, a weave and it basically will make it so that the line does not expand. The lines that we're going to be installing today are a coated line from fluid transfer products. The reason why you'd want a coated line is because sand can actually wear through the internal liner if it gets beneath that stainless steel weave and then you'll start to develop a leak. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, the brakes are on. Now it's time to see if the setup stands up to the hype. When we come back, we'll put our Synaptic 3 brake package through the same test we did on the stock system. Will it do better? Oh, I'm sure. How much better? Well, stick around and find out. Nasiok has prawn. I thought they meant it was porn. Dude, that's just not right. The Rippler. Haikus are stupid. I would never do one, guys. Here is the next bit. A few months ago, we were contacted by a company that makes engine oil additives. You know the stuff. Boost your horsepower, increase fuel economy, all by pouring a bottle of snake oil into your engine. Well, they wanted to send us a bottle of their product, and we said we'd test it on the show to prove or disprove it. None of us wanted to dump this stuff into our own cars, so we found a test car that nobody cared about, Matt K's 1985 Jetta. We decided to see how it would affect fuel economy, but before we went testing out the miracle engine treatment, we took the Jetta for a 100-mile highway loop to establish a baseline. All right, we topped off the gas tank. We're at the start point of our loop. Let's go drive 100 miles. Seatbelt. Pretty important. There's not a whole lot to do on a 100 mile middle of the night drive. Uh, oh, we've got the stereo here. Sounds pretty good. In the end, the engine treatment never arrived in the mail. Maybe these guys were afraid of being debunked. But we did find that by driving a steady 55 miles an hour in minimal traffic, we managed to get 37 miles to the gallon on the highway in Matt's Jetta. So the moral of the story is that you don't have to go to great lengths to save money at the pump, and engine oil additives probably don't work. <laughs> 